Martin, thank you for being with us again. You've been a great friend to the Episcopal Church in South Carolina. I'm grateful, and many people are grateful for your presence. And here we are on Ascension Day. Yes. And um, uh, I remember some years ago, there was an article in a journal I was reading, and somebody said, well, this year, Ascension Day is on a Thursday. And some of us, <laughs> some of us smiled and said, well, it's always on a Thursday, because, as we all know, um, in St. Luke's chronology, it's the 40th day in the great 50 days of Easter. And it, it's my sense often that uh, many folks, any folks in the church, have a hard time sort of getting their head and heart around what Ascension Day is. And so, any thoughts for us on what it might say about who God is and who we are as God's people? Well, my feeling is you can never have the same Ascension Day. Uh-huh. It's always new, depending on the context of faith in which is celebrated. Mm-hmm. This context is one in which people are losing their optimism about the future of our own society and the globe with mounting sensation that our sense of progress is stalling and that the climate change and mass migration, all these things are really uh, forming a kind of a threat. Mm-hmm. So I think Ascension Day is very much about hope. The end of optimism creates the setting for hope. And one of the things about the Ascension is that we believe Christ is liberated by the Ascension from being contained in the past. So he becomes not only a contemporary figure who is keeping us company in our own journey, but far more importantly, Christ becomes the Christ of the future, who is ahead of us, who is a pioneer into the future we face, the future of climate change, artificial intelligence, mass migration, all these things that seem so daunting. We believe that Christ is not the Christ who is and who was and who is to come. Therefore, ascension, I think for us, is really going to be about how Christ is released through his intimacy with God to be present in all things, but above all, to come to us from our future. And I think, I think part of our own celebration of the ascension might be part of a big change Whereas our religion has been so geared to the authority of the past, to precedence, that we've lost a grasp of the fact that the gospel is about being under the authority of God's future. Mm. It's not that God has dictated in the past things to which we must adhere, but God summons us to be co-creators of a future that has never been seen before. Yes, and it's really a beyond all time, is it not? Right. Yeah, and, and, and I love that distinction between optimism and hope. They are very, two very different things, very, are they not? Very. Yeah. And I think the confusion between the two, mistaking Christianity for an upbeat faith that mm. sort of um, sings merrily into the future. We have a certain tragic vision. The last, in Christian art, the last view you get of Christ is his pierced feet. Yes. There have been all sorts of religious stories about great leaders having an apotheosis. Roman empires being glorified mm-hmm. and made gods and so on. But no religion has ever proclaimed that a victim of crucifixion, a representative of those who have been cheated, betrayed, abandoned, and finally destroyed, is at the right hand of God. And paradoxically, we find hope in that. We find hope in that yeah. because God is not on the side of power but on the side of suffering love. Yes. Thank you. Um, I think we're in the same place.